Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Hello. Woo! <laughs> um, anybody, how, how many people here know what a B Corp is? Anyone? Anyone? Some, all right, that's good. That's, that's more than usual. Um, so Buddy and I are with a company called uh, here in Chicago called Mighty Bytes. We are a B Corp. We became a B Corp in, in 2011. Um, what that means is we are a company that uses business as a force for good. Uh, we use business to solve social and environmental uh, problems. So we align our purpose with our profit, um, and we make money, but we also use our resources to help organizations, nonprofits, by creating strategic partnerships. And we are graded on this performance uh, using a tool called the B Impact Assessment. Um, and so the, with the B Impact Assessment, you can go to bimpactassessment.net, um, and it is an assessment tool that grades a business um, anybody can use it if you're not a business and you just want to see how you're performing individually or as a nonprofit. Anybody can use this tool uh, to see how they perform in areas of uh, your role within your community, like how, how much of a c corporate citizen you're playing within your community, uh, your relationship with your workers, how you treat your workers, uh, your transparency and governance, so do you have open book management policies, that kind of thing, and then environmental sustainability. So I first found out about B Corps uh, for, on an org on a, a event called Climate Ride, um, which is an a bike ride that raises money for environmental causes. Someone from B Lab, which is the nonprofit that certifies B Corps, was there talking about it, and it sounded to me like a really interesting way to, to run and, and grow a business. So Mighty Bytes is a web design and software development company uh, here in Chicago, and we've been around for 17 years. Uh, we were, for a while, which in internet years is very, very old, <laughs> Um, we, were, we were very environmentally friendly. We had all the whole green office, you know, all of the features of a green office. Um, and we had a lot of cause-driven clients. Uh, I started off in the heyday of the internet, and there was tons and tons of projects there, but there were a lot of really crappy ones. And so it didn't take very long of doing projects for, you know, promoting things that I didn't personally agree with morally, that I was like, you know what, I really want to be focusing my work on stuff that matters. So we started working with education companies and nonprofits and, and helping them use the internet to grow and succeed. Um, and so when the B Corp assessment came along, uh, I was like, this is a great idea for my business. And so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means for Mighty Bytes from a business owner's perspective, and then Buddy's going to take it over and he's going to talk about what it means for an employee working at a, at a B Corp. So, as a business owner, I, I like it for a couple different reasons. There's the certification, which provides me this awesome blueprint for building and growing a more sustainably, uh, socially good focused business. Um, which means that, you know, we, right now we're in the process of certifying for the third time. Every two years, we go through the certification process. So it's a great way to benchmark social performance. So, you know, we scored, I think it was 80. You have to get 80 points in order to become a certified B Corp. We scored like 88 the first year. And um, we scored really, really well in environmental category and, and in strategic partnerships with clients and stuff like that. We didn't score so well in employees because our industry is built on a lot of contractor labor. So we had lots of freelancers coming in and out. And so we kind of used the, the impact assessment as a guide to kind of grow our business in the areas where we're weak. We're weak. So uh, examples of some B Corps who have also done this, uh, Method Cleaning Products, are you familiar with their, their soap? Um, so they just built a huge plant uh, down on the south side of Chicago. And they, uh, like, like Mighty Bites, they performed really well in environmental categories because of the fact that they are very environmentally focused as a company. Um, but they didn't necessarily focus so well on, on community and some of the other areas of the impact assessment. So they, when they built their lead platinum uh, plant on the south side, which is like the, their industry's first lead platinum plant, they put a wind turbine on it and they did all of the things that one would expect a company like Method to do for environmental impact. But then they also built it in Pullman and they made a specific uh, goal to hire from Pullman, which was a neighborhood that could, could use the, the, the economic development that they offered. So they use the impact assessment to, to make these, help guide them in these decisions. And we've done the same at Mighty Bites, where we've, as we've gone and seen where we could do better in, in, in community, we start doing more community engagement, partnering with our local chamber of commerce. In workers, we're at, you know, consistently adding better benefits and talking about that, and, and, and Buddy will be able to address some of those things. Um, in environment, we're always trying to, when we moved into a new office, we made sure that the, the, as many of the features of the new office were as sustainable as possible using you know, partial recycled materials wherever possible. We have living green walls, and we compost in the office, so there are worms in our kitchen and all kinds of good stuff. Um, so there's like this, this is, it's a great benchmark to kind of 
plan and build and grow a business like this. So, so as a business owner, that's been really rewarding to me. Um, you know, there is a certain uh, 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 financial trade-off in, in some of these things, um, but it's worth it in, in so many ways. Uh, B Corps are more likely to survive a recession. They are more likely to keep their employees for longer than, than, than others, you know, non, non, non socially conscious business businesses. Um, so there are a number of different reasons why B Corps are, are, are a better way of doing business. So th that was kind of my driving force for, for, for going through the certification. And then in 2013, in addition to the certification, we actually became a legal benefit corporation. So what that means, it's a different, there are two different things. There's a certification, which is like the good housekeeping seal of approval for the business. But then there's the actual legal structure, which is, has been passed in about 30 states, Illinois being one of them. And so now, uh, as part of our legal, legal structure, we are, have a benefit corporation, which means that our social mission, environmental mission, is baked into the DNA of the company. So in other words, if I decide I want to sell Mighty Bites, whoever buys Mighty Bites has to keep that, that social mission a, a, as part of the company. So the idea behind this is that the, uh, the guys who started B Lab, the, the organization that, that, that kind of governs the B Corp bodies, um, they had a company called And One, which was a basketball uh, uh, footwear company. Um, they had all of these really great sustainability uh, uh, initiatives and employee engagement initiatives and all that kind of stuff. And when they sold the company, uh, the, the company that came in and bought them gutted that completely. And so lots of people lost their jobs. Lots of people had, you know, the, the company became a completely different company. So the idea of the benefit corporation legislation is to kind of get rid of that and, and, and help, it, help a company stay intact when it comes to your social and environmental, environmental mission as you go through a sale. Um, and then the final thing that B-Lab offers, in addition to the certification and the legal, legal structure, is uh, uh, access to capital for entrepreneurs, for socially driven entrepreneurs. So they have a whole impact investment arm as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Buddy right now and let him talk a little bit about what it means to work at a B Corp um, and, and take it away. <laughs> uh, sure. So I, I came on after this uh, assessment started. And it's, it's very interesting to see uh, Mighty Bytes kind of move towards a, a better company. Um, and using that as a benchmark. So I'd suppose working for a B Corp is important to me in terms of, of value, value of myself and value of the work I'm doing. Um, so before I came to Mighty Bites, I was, I was at a much larger um, kind of media conglomerate where I, I was more of a, a cog based on quantitative output, where at Mighty Bites, I'm much more of a consultant. It's much more democratic. Uh, we have quarterly meetings uh, every quarter and twice a year do something called a SOAR analysis where everyone can kind of come together um, and spitball how we want to make our company better. It's baked into our, um, baked into our mantra. And I'd suppose the value um, of the work I'm doing is much higher, both in terms of clients uh, we're working with, clients like uh, Climate Ride or Elevate Energy. Uh, you get to see these great ideas coming in front of you every day, which I, I've just never had at a job before. And it feels really good um, aligning with these uh, partners for better and being able to amplify their ideas and push them out the door. Um, and I'd suppose the, the, one of the most important parts of this job is looking at sustainability um, in web design. And every day we're trying to optimize our process, um, make websites more efficient, um, and it's it feels very good to, to be a part of that. Sure. Yeah, uh, that was actually one of the things uh, in addition to you know, improving our benefits and, and that kind of thing. Uh, many of the f questions in the impact assessment are focused on supply chain. Where do you source your materials from? Where do you source your, pe your, your people from? You know, we kind of, because of the fact that we're a digital firm, we looked at it and we're like, we've got people and pixels, so we don't have much of a supply chain. Um, but pixels require electricity, so, you know, and so we started looking into the carbon footprint of the internet, and lo and behold, it's massive. And so we, you know, annually it releases about 830 million tons of CO2, and so we're like, suddenly we're more part of the problem than we realize that we are. So we're like, okay, we build the internet. We, you know, we, we have a responsibility to make sure that the websites that we serve to our clients are housed on on, on green web hosting powered by renewable energy, that they're optimized to be user, user efficient uh, as well as energy efficient. Um, and so we put that out there as, as, a, as an opportunity to completely change our, our entire way of work looking at what we do for clients. Um, and so the B-Impact assessment was a kind of driving force in all of this. 
So we've only got a couple minutes left in our, our chat here. I, I wanted to make sure we had time enough for questions. Does anybody have questions about what, what being a B Corp is all about? It does, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the workers, a lot of the work sec questions in the workers section are about uh, gender, race, uh, uh, sexuality, all kinds of different, you know, uh, 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 diversity components for sure. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Oh, sure. Hi. Sure. I, I, you know, I mean, a composting bin costs money. You know, um, so there is a certain cost component to some of these things that you do. Um, but the, to me, the trade-off is that it's a better place to work, you know? Um, and so it's, it's every year we go through and we kind of, we have a por portion of our annual company budget cordoned off for, for this specific purpose. You know, we're like, okay, how much are we gonna spend on this this year? Um, we also, this earlier this year, we did a hackathon where everybody in the company got together and said, okay, these are some major sections of the B impact assessment. Let's get together in groups and figure out how we might answer these or, or what are some company initiatives that we might be able to do. And then we'll take that information and we'll cross-reference it a bit with what we can actually afford to do. And be like, okay, this year we have, based on our budget, we have this amount of, of things that we can do. Um, and, and then next year we'll put these things on the, on the plan for next year and, and kind of, so we kind of continuously benchmarking it. And we've seen our, our profitability increase uh, right after we became a B Corp. We, um, we worked, started working with a lot more B Corps, so people were finding us because we were a B Corp. Um, so there was, for us that was a, a great trade-off that we actually got a whole, opened up to a whole new client base because of these, these initiatives, you know. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, we just hired five, so we're what, 17 or 18 uh, now? I think we're at 18 We're a small, small company, and, and that's on purpose. Like, we want to make sure, one of the things about being small is it allows us to do some of these things. It allows us to be more agile and kind of pivot when we need to pivot and stuff. So that's, that's a, it's, it's, we're, the five people in six weeks is a lot <laughs> for us. <laughs> No, the, the question is, are there a, million, uh, a minimum number of people uh, in a company to be a B Corp? And the answer is no. So like I said at the beginning, anybody can use the B Impact Assessment. So an individual can use the B Impact Assessment to gauge their, their um, uh, uh, performance. What you need to have in order to become a certified B Corp is you need to have a corporate structure. So being an S Corp, C Corp, an LLC, et cetera. Um, and, in, and you need to have at least one year of being in business. Now, if you don't have that one year of being in business, you can be what they call a pending B Corp. That's a brand new thing that they introduced this year. So you can use the impact assessment to say, yes, I want to be a certified B Corp. And when I reach that one year point, I'm going to get my certification. But for now, I'm going to get the little you know, pending logo on my website or wherever instead of the actual actual B Corp certification logo. Yes? You mentioned that a lot of people are more interested in working for B Corp than they were talking about your experience. Have you seen a shift in the way like, more and more companies are becoming B Corps and it's not as unique that you're having a harder time attracting people? Or that well, given what we do, like developers are like hen's teeth. They're like next to impossible to find. Yeah. So B Corp or no B Corp, that's always a challenge for us is finding people. Um, there have been people who have come to us that said, I only want to work for a B Corp. And the uh, bcorporation.net is the website you want to go to if you want to find anything else out on this. Uh, their jobs board is the most active part of their site. People posting jobs, searching for jobs. So, so there's definitely something there. Um, and I wouldn't say that it's been more difficult. We only still have about 30 to 35 B Corps here in Illinois. So it's not like it's huge. There are 1,250-ish B Corps globally in 121 in different industries in something like 70 some countries. So it's global, but it's also small pockets of, you know, of companies and stuff. So, um, so, that, so there hasn't been this like critical mass of like, okay, now everybody's a B Corp. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> you know, you had a question, Raj? They, it's about the impact of your work, um, and so because of the fact that so much of our work is in impact-driven organizations, we're able to include that as part of the assessment. So the, the question was like, how do they take into account, you know, what what your your uh, what kind of clients you have essentially? Um, and uh, we also they also ask a lot of questions about strategic partnerships. So uh, you know, many of the many of the. Um, B Corps partner with nonprofits. So like Warby Parker, for instance, gives away a pair of glasses. They partner with a nonprofit to get those glasses to people who need them who are in underserved communities and stuff like that. So each 
B Corp assesses that differently based on their business model because they're literally, you know, it's not all just marketing or digital firms. It's it's food companies. It's you know, it's products and services. I think of the um, 1,200 B Corps, about 350 of them or so are product-based companies, um, and then the other are service-based companies. So, any other questions? Oh, we got one more over here. Uh, No, that's not, it's really about our business model. They, they, they will ask you, like, do you, when you're using, sourcing your suppliers, for instance, they'll ask you, you know, how, do you ask them about their sustainability initiatives? Do you, do you see, find out where their supp supplies and things come from? So we do do that. Like, so we use uh, Give Something Back, which is another B Corp for office supplies. And so they give away 100% of their profits to nonprofits and stuff. So, yeah, Monty. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, public public B, public ben, um, companies. If there are only a couple of them, Etsy uh, went public recently. They're a B Corp. Uh, um, Plum Organics, owned by Campbell's, uh, also did that. Um, but there have been there's not been this big influx of public companies because one of the big challenges in this is that the law right now in the in the United States is structured to maximize shareholder value. So at any time, a public company can go in and be like. Hey, hey! This stuff is just not maximizing the shareholder value. It's it's maximizing shared value, which is a different thing completely. So I think that a lot of public companies are going to have challenges, you know, kind of getting through this. But it's really inspiring to see companies like Etsy and Plum Organics and and, and you know, kind of go through this process, and and uh, and come out intact and 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 having that mission be intact and having you know not only consumers but shareholders embrace that mission. Yeah, there's a whole purchase with a purpose movement um, that you'll see. Something they're they're working on something at Whole Foods right now. Um, there, there's a, a I can't remember the Abe's uh, not Abe's market. There's a market in Portland that has a whole you know area where they focus uh, in their store. They focus on be they have the Be the Change logo and and uh, focus on specifically why buying for B Corps is a better thing. We actually last year built uh, BCorpsStore.com, which right now is the only place online to actually buy specifically and exclusively from B Corps. Um, which didn't exist prior to that. So there are initiatives. I think there's still, B Corps have only been around since 2007. So there's still kind of, you know, still a growing, growing movement. Anyone else? Uh, Bcorporation.net is to, uh, or bcorpstore.com is what, what we were talking about that we built. Bcorporation.net is where you can go to find out anything about B Corps. Uh, Buddy and I will also be around if you want to want to ask questions of us or if you want to have a conversation, more than happy to do that. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much. Appreciate your thank time. You.